What's up, my lunatics? Welcome back to my channel. But if it's the first time, my name is Anastasia Luna and welcome to you too. All right, today, one and only the love of my life, my biggest woman crush <laughs> today is with us. Maggie, I'm so, so happy that uh, I saw that comment under my video that uh, that you posted uh, saying that you wouldn't mind doing an interview because I was like, there's no way she would like talk to me. And, you know, my YouTube channel is not at a point where I have like 100, 200, 300,000 subscribers. So I was like, there's no way I'm, I'm even going to try to contact her. And then I saw that comment under my video which was actually brought to me by one of uh people but one of my subscribers and i was like oh my god my life just got better i will never be the same so thank you so much for taking time to uh do this you're so welcome i'm really glad to be here and to and to have this conversation with you i'm looking forward Awesome. I like your hair. They're so long. I need to color my hair. They're like all brown. All right. So uh, I was preparing for the interview and I was so um, ambitious. I was like, I'm going to learn everything about Maggie. I'm going to learn every single possible thing about like her life, where she was born, you know, whether she's married or not, like every single thing about like your biography, like personal biography. And there's really nothing anywhere and uh if there is something it's in a different language so um i know very limited amount of information about you so uh tell me where you were born you know what kind of family you were born in whether it was a family of musicians or not and you know just your early life right well first of all i want to say in a way at this point of my you know in my life i i'm glad that there's so less about me <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I it's actually a gift, you know. So I'm going to I'm going to say that to you uh, but that's great. Wow. Awesome. I love it. Every everyone knows everything about everyone today, yeah, right? I know. On the internet. And uh yeah, so to answer your question, there's actually a secret about where I was born. I was born in Brussels in Belgium and I was raised in the Flanders as a little Flemish person, Netherlands. Okay. And then I uh, moved when I was around 18, 19 years old, I moved to the, the French part of Belgium. Okay, and uh, did you grow up in a family of musicians or you just kind of picked it up by yourself? I, uh, I grew up in a family of uh, non-musicians at all. And, um, and my dad was a very musical person. He loved music. Mm -hmm. uh, he was not a musician. He only played a little bit piano, you know, always the same parts <laughs> and very proud of it. But uh, but he was not a real musician. And he was actually very, uh, very proud of me when I actually showed interest on the piano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how old were you when you started showing interest? I, I can't really be sure, but I think I was around eight or nine. OK, yeah. In Russia, we yeah. started. Uh, if we want to study classical music, we have to start when we're like six or seven. Mm -hmm. So my parents didn't give me a chance to like figure my life out. They were like, do you want to go to music school and sing songs? And I'm like, sure. And then I'm stuck in this music school with like music theory and like hardcore classes. So <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I got to it a little bit later because I was like six years old. I'm like, what am I doing here? So um, I remember you were saying that your grandmother actually played a big part in your life as far as music goes and piano. Yeah, yeah, she really did. And, uh, and, and for years, and it's never going to stop this anecdote. I love to share it because I think it's, it really changed my life. Um, how she uh, she really wanted me to um, to have fun, and so we would learn uh, the piano with the solfege, you know, the notes and the academic way yes. with this book, and uh, and and I would follow the, the the notes and everything, and and she would sit next to me, like I always say, the elephant, and I'm the little mouse. <laughs> because the high notes and she's the low notes and um and so and one day she played something and I always looked looked at her fingers mm -hmm. and I listened and she would play something and I just did it and then she said I knew it and I was like oh 
oh, you know. So she she played something that was not written, right? Exactly. Mm. And that was so great because, you know, she said, I knew it. And, and she closed the book and she said, if you don't want to do it, we, we don't have to. If you hate these readings and this shit, you know, we don't have to do it. She didn't say shit. She was very, <laughs> you know, but uh, we don't have to do it. And just because she didn't force me into it, I, I told her, I said, well, maybe I, I want to. And, and I opened the book back up and we started again and we would do what was really there. But she, um, yeah, she, she actually taught me to do things because it has a purpose for yourself and not because you're told to do it. And I love that about, about this anecdote because it's about life. You know, you should never, whatever, even if you do, but in my perception, you should never do something because you're just being told to. You may be told to do something, but you should know why you're doing it. And, and also if you really want to do it or if you really need to, you know, it's about, do I really want to, do I really need to? And, and, and that's the point. And that's probably also the reason why you didn't find that much about me on internet, you know? So far, I didn't feel like I really need, needed to or wanted to. So I see. And today I agree because maybe I want it. Maybe I, maybe I need it. You see? Yeah. Uh, it's really great that she let you kind of do it by ear because mm -hmm. I, I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm almost overtrained in certain things. And I'm always envious of people like you that can just like, go and play something without any like you know just by ear without like rehearsing or anything for me i i'm like i need to rehearse this i need to know exactly what i'm doing there i need to have my notes i need to have everything like plan 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 and i'm always envious of people that can actually go and just do it like even in a studio you know if i go to the studio i know exactly where i'm breathing <laughs> and it yeah. stops me a lot of times from like actually maybe doing things better so it's really cool that she um kind of started that thing for you like playing by ear and like living your life according to your own rules and wishes yeah well i you know what i can tell you is that in my belief we're always envious about something where everyone <laughs> is envious towards someone else or something else and so so i could say i'm envious uh, you know toward other people that that did study or that whatever you know but um it's it, it's all about finding a, a nice balance between between all these things become because we can't do it all in this life we won't live enough or maybe we will i mean who knows there's technology is going nuts right now yeah. but i don't think we will to live it all and so uh you have to make choices and and, and I think what you have is very precious. And now you have to, to go in that, that direction of like, now I'm going to let go, right? And, and what I have was always about letting go. And maybe I'm like, now I want to control uh -huh. to, to have more or to go this way. or So it's always about balance. It's, there's not, I don't think there's anything that is better or worse. Mm -hmm. It's it's what you make out of it that is important. And I love my life. I love everything so far, even the worst situation. I love everything about it. So yeah. growing up, uh, you said your father was very musical. Uh, did he kind of put you on to like rock metal kind of road or what kind of music did he listen to? He, he really listened to mainly to uh, French, French music, mm -hmm. and, uh, but good, good stuff. Because back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, um, artists were, um, even on the French scene, they were still really artists. So they could sing, they could dance, they could act, play music and, and all these things. So, so it was very rich. And I think we're going back to this at some point, because if you want to remain an artist nowadays, you can not just fake it for many years. If you fake it, you, you can make it, but for maybe a short time. And you may, maybe you make a lot of money and good for you, but 
<laughs> that's it really you know but if you want to last on the scene as an artist as a real artist from your guts you 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 need to to be able to yeah capable of doing things and uh and they were very capable these artists that i knew about and and he also introduced me to the beatles and for me this is it you know the beatles is the thing i had the blue and the red album you know those best offs do you know about them no i mean i listened to beatles growing up my it's father was great. very musical too but yeah. i in russia i guess we were getting different things mm -hmm. i don't know in different times as well you yeah, know different, oh, different times. Are, musically it differs mm -hmm. um yeah. so beatles and uh when did you actually started thinking like you know what i want to go hard like i want to go rock metal well i never i never thought of that it just happens i slipped and um and and it was i think i was around 19 years old 18 19 years old Okay. But I had a band when I was 15. Mm -hmm. and uh, But really going hard was around 19. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So um, I'm just like thinking about like young Maggie, 15 year old uh, girl playing in bands. Uh, were your parents supportive of that? Because sometimes parents like, no, like you study music, but you have to go and get normal conventional education and you know all this band all this music stuff is all silly like did they support you did they push you in that direction did they let you do what you want to do or they kind of like you know what look at like being a lawyer <laughs> and you know making money well um how can I say um they never really supported me but mm -hmm. they never were really in the way either and um because I never had the ambition of like, I want to be a musician. I want to do music. I want to, mm -hmm. this was really, when I was 15, it was my, my greatest hobby. And they didn't realize how important it was in my life, but it, for, for them, it was my hobby. And it was great that I had a band and I would play music and, you know, and I could express myself and, and stuff like that because they knew how much I love the keyboards because I was, my first band, I was a keyboard player. I was not singing at all. I was super, mm -hmm. not shy, but really introverted. And uh -huh. um, so they were never in my way. They were supportive in a way of not being in my way, you know? And I, uh, well, that's important yeah. too, yeah. I had other plans. I, I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be, you know, like maybe a, a translator or um, a secretary or which I actually became in the end. But um but no, I, it was very organic. Yes. Thank you. That's the word. Organic. <laughs> it just happened to me. Yeah. So you're saying that you were uh, a piano player at first um, and kind of introverted. Did you sing like to yourself when you're like in your house? Or mm -hmm. kind of. Um, and, and I would even, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I'm. I'm very proud of what I can do, but I'm also very humble. And I would never pretend to be a piano player or a pianist. I'm really a keyboard player. I, I'm a musician. I really feel like a musician. I feel music. I can. I. I, I get the chords. I. I. am very rhythm. Uh, a rhythm person uh -huh. and stuff like that. And um, and so yes, I would sing in my bedroom since very early age and. Uh, and 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 I and I only sang when they were gone, you know. <laughs> but okay. uh, up to you know, it was so almost sick. But now I understand it's not sick. It's actually now that I have many students, it's not sick at all. It's very natural. Is that I would wait for them to be gone, but then it was a little bit paranoid. Like I would turn off the lights, you know, switch off the lights, and then um, my blinds would be totally closed with just a little you know, uh -huh. tiny little thing so I can see the the car coming in and um and 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 the music was super loud and I even locked the door of my bedroom just for myself like I'm safe I'm okay you know and um and then when I saw them coming home I would be like fuck you know and then music off and unlocking the door I was not supposed to lock my own door you know and then I would I would just fake fake the fact that I was asleep and go uh -huh. to 
go to bed. So it was like really intense. This uh, singing adventure was very intense for me. Like uh, this is very just like my thing. Don't don't enter my world, you know. It really changed, but I know I was just gonna say, like looking at you, like the first time I saw you, you were um I was doing a reaction video to one of the Aryan stuff, and I was like, Oh my god, she looks so tiny, but she's such a hellraiser, and she's like so in your face and like aggressive in a good way. And it's so interesting that it it was it wasn't always like this. You were very you were very different growing up. So um when did you actually start? singing was it at this in the same band or did you join another band as a singer i did join another band and, and uh and that meant uh the the end of a whole chapter in my life because we moved from the flanders to to the french part one in belgium and um and there was no way i could be in that band anymore because i i had no independence of like i'm gonna drive to my rehearsal room I, no, didn't oh, have your heart broken. Oh, Not no. just my heart. Everything was broken. My oh. world was gone. I mean, oh, I, no. I didn't realize how much how much it it mattered to me un, until I lost it. And um and so I would just uh try to find another band and I wanted to play the keyboard again and 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 I checked for a little uh announcements in the newspapers back in 98 newspapers <laughs> hey right real organic paper in your hands that you look up and shit and so um the the, the guy told me like oh we already found a keyboard player so can you sing and i remember being in his car and and sing a little i don't know what i don't remember but then he said, oh, you sing nice. You, you have a good voice. You sing in key. If you want, you're our singer. All right. <laughs> and it <laughs> just happened. It. And was it there just... anything, was there anything like within you, like, were you nervous? Because it was not like yeah. you it at that time. And how did you overcome that, like, nervousness? I, I was nervous, but no one knew about it. And I, and I. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> I used it. I used the fact that they didn't know. And um, because no one knew me in that new part of the world, right? And uh, mm -hmm. and so I would just go and be a badass and like, yeah, cool. And, you know, <laughs> but I mean, really, I wasn't. And I didn't feel like that at all, you know. But I think in the end, it's, um, I think we all are badasses, but we don't allow ourselves to be up to a certain point in life. And um and and I know that I'm a badass for real. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But it doesn't mean that I don't have uh, weaknesses or or emotional break break uh, throughs or breakouts. I don't know how you say it. Whatever. Yeah, like yeah. You understand me, and uh, and so yeah, that's how I started. You know, and I would just buy my first microphone. I still have it. I think I think I have it somewhere. I don't know if it's in this one, but. I kept it and now I'm it's shit. No, it's not the one. But um oh yeah, wait. This is it. This is my first microphone. This is my pride. Oh this is so tiny. <laughs> that is so cool. That's my oh, first yeah. micro, I mean, my first real microphone because I had mics with my dad. We would record songs and, you know, actually in the same pockets. Uh -huh. I didn't prepare, I promise. But it's, <laughs> there. it's just there. This is the very first microphone. It looks it's so the, interesting. It's a, uh, what is it? A realistic, realistic um, MP. 60 something caridoid caridoid brand so this was actually my dad's uh, microphone and i and i got it just like a memorial because this is the first one i really sang into as a child like la, 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 like little children uh -huh, uh -huh. So, did you yeah. did your parents go to any of your performances like when you started singing were they shocked um, like oh my god she sings now <laughs> Actually, no, not really. Um, 
I think my mom was there for one of my first gigs, but not really because I actually left the house in a rebel mode, <laughs> you know, like I'm the, yeah, I'm out of here. You know, I was 21 and, and I would just, uh, you know, go away and, and be out and do my thing. And that's another story. But so I, I really lived my own life for a whole while. And, um, and so, no, not really. I really did my own thing. Yeah. That's great. Um, so let's talk about the voice. So you have yeah. this, like big rock, raspy voice. Has it always been the case? Uh, Cause some people do have that natural raspiness to them. Um, how did you sound when you started singing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I know how I sounded. I sounded um, um, way smaller. Uh -huh. um, resonance was higher, definitely higher, and um, less precise, mm -hmm. but always in key, but not always precise. I learned to really make a difference between people that are out of key, in key, but not precise, you know? And so, um, but I had no rasp at all. Um, I, I think I still have a demo of you know old stuff and i can hear it but one thing i know is that the intention was real and i love that mm -hmm. because that's how you get it that's how you get there mm. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna keep that in mind every time i go to the studio maggie told me <laughs> to be real. oh man it's just you know i did not invent anything i'm all only there to remind you it's all about intention I see. There's no way you can do anything without intention. It stinks without intention. Yeah, I mean, it's fake. And, and usually people will yeah. see through that fakeness. Um, so did you start taking uh, some voice lessons or did you kind of just start listening to people that you want to sound like and practice by yourself? How did that go? Yeah, actually, I... Um... Lately, I, uh, I remember it's that one of the first uh, air mics that I did with my hairbrush was on Skunk and Nancy. You know Skunk and Nancy? Yeah, I do. Cool. Well, I, uh, I loved her so much. She's like, wow, her voice is just powerful. But at the same time, there's like grit and power. And then she can be so, so smooth and 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 not weak, never weak, but very emotional, very mm -hmm. like fragile, you know? And I loved it so much. And so I remember that, but then my, uh, my very first big, big master, I would say, after Bono from U2 when I was uh -huh. a teenager and stuff, you know? But the first real master for me was Russell Allen. Uh-huh. He was the guy, you know, because for me, he sounded like he could do it all. And I think he can't because no one can do it all. But he sounds like that. And I love his intention. And um, and I started to, uh, to train on all the symphonic songs ever. Everything you can come up with, I would train on. And, uh, and it was so hard, but I would just go for it. Even if it sounded like shit, I would just go get that <laughs> note you know, and do it. And I'm going to do it, you know, and it's yay. And, and so, yeah, that's how I really started to train. And then I, I stumbled on Jorn Landa mm -hmm. from ARC. I mean, at the time he was in ARC and then he went, you know, doing other things like master plan and stuff. But uh, man, this guy, they were, they were like my, my, my guys, you know, and I would look up to them like, yeah, my big brothers kind of thing. Uh -huh. and, then I, and then I learned about Dio, Ronnie James Dio. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I thought, wow, they get it from him and Glenn Hughes and, 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 uh, and David Coverdale and, you know, and then bands like Mr. Big and, and Foreigner and all these bands. And I, and this whole world opened up and Winger, Keep Winger and stuff. So, but, but very, very mainly uh, guys mm -hmm. that I love because of that grit and the power. But then I love uh, Janis Joplin and Annie okay. Lennox mm -hmm. from um, uh, Eurythmics 
or um, or Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac. You know, I love all these voices because they're so anchored. They're so yeah, you know. Love so, it. but you still basically learned taught yourself. Oh yeah, just to answer your question, there you go. My my natural answer was like, yeah, I listen to everything I love and and I I suck it in, but um, I I did learn by myself to do everything that you shouldn't do. Okay. <laughs> got it I, I learned all the, the possible mistakes you can do with your voice mm -hmm. I learned them by myself very proud of it it's super rich because um, I really know what I don't want anymore and mm -hmm. that's great I feel it what I don't want anymore and um, and I had a few you know like um, very important people in my life that that um, helped me put put together this big puzzle, this big puzzle of what the voice is, when it comes to anatomy and when it comes to um, being free, and when it comes to why are you doing this? All these big things, right? Yes. Because you you can be very knowledgeable and super boring, or and and perform so many octaves and and be boring and while another person that has not many octaves and a small register would go like like you know be super interesting because there is this intention and i and what i love about the voice is really how you color it intention so yes i basically really learned it by myself Mm -hmm. But I opened up all the windows and the doors that I could possibly possibly open to to take from other people and and get it all together, understand what's going on, you know, because everyone has a different opinion about voice or it's everyone says the same, but differently. I mean, yeah, there, there are also different trainings, different countries, yes. different ways of teaching and everything. So when you started developing that like raspness, were you like, ooh? <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, That's new. I would say that um, the, the the reaction would be more like, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's um, it's to you know start chilling in this mic, not hearing yourself enough. So that's the reason why you yell, and then you realize that there's a reason behind this uh, sound problem where you actually really need to yell. And then you're doing it and you're like, yeah, this feels so good. Fuck off everyone, you know, and yay, because then you can, you can actually feel love again when you, uh, oh, when so you learn to, I think, yeah, you need to, at some point you need to learn also to be mad or to be angry, you know, uh, it's not people, but situations. Mm -hmm. and, and accept it and be really angry and then you can finally love again and and starting with loving yourself and so yeah i i, I went uh, a long way in that sense and it's very nice actually i'm it glad to it's, it's like yeah. a whole road um yeah. so you are a voice teacher as well right do you teach what what do you do differently? Because I feel like you are a very non-conventional voice teacher. Do Thank you, you. Uh, do you do something? Do you teach only uh, people that are interested in rock, or and how does your class go? Because like you're such like an organic person, I feel like your you as a voice teacher would be so different from what I personally am used to. So how do you approach teaching a person? Well. Am I right or it's many questions? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, let's say, how do I approach voice teaching? Um, first of all, I started about 20 years ago because someone after a gig told me, you can sing really nice. Could you give me a, a voice lesson? And I said, okay, you know, that's how I started. So it was definitely not planned. And she started coming and, and then she came back and I was like, I like that, you know, I actually enjoy this. And, uh, and then she talked to a friend who would come as well. And I was like, yay, nice. And a little bit money, extra money, yay, good for me. 
And, uh, but I really enjoyed it. And I never pretended to, to teach anyone anything that I did not know about. Mm-hmm. I was only sharing things that I or knew about or felt and could just bring on to the, the person. And, um, and so my, my uh, vocal approach is very much into um, listening mm-hmm. because without your ears, what's the point? I mean, I see so many people starting to sing a song like, I love that song. And then there they are and they sing, you know, like, did you even take the time to really listen to what it's about and, and the little nuance and, and stuff, you know? Uh, no, no. Okay. Good for you. But I mean, just listen and, and you win time. So it's about listening. And I know that I help people because I listen to really uh, to, to what's going on. And after so many years, it's, it's not just um, about this sounds good or this doesn't, but I have this knowledge now uh, of a voice teacher. I have it about how it works, the anatomy, about your larynx and vocal cords and, mm-hmm. and the false cords when it comes to fry and all these things. So I know it and I think it's very important so I can say, you know, hey, fuck that, you know, and let's go into your, your emotional and your feeling uh, parts. It sounds weird. No, but, I mean, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but if you need an explanation, I can give it to you. And, and then we can, then we can talk about it. But maybe you did not need that. Maybe you, you just need someone that says, come on, you know, like, go <laughs> do it, you know? And very often that's how it happens. And then sometimes it doesn't. And, and many people need to be uh, comforted and, and reassured in like, it's okay, I can do a uh, fry voice or I can scream without hurting myself and I understand why and stuff like that. So I think that is where I am I feel strong as a voice teacher that I don't even want to be called like anymore. I don't want to be called a voice teacher anymore mm-hmm. because that's not what I'm really doing in the end anymore, but it's part of it. The voice teacher is like hidden behind a curtain, like, hey, hey, here I am, if you need me, you know, yes. but it's really not what I'm doing anymore. You're yeah. like a life coach. <laughs> In a way, but I, I never wanted to, or I never pretend to change your life or anything, but I definitely know that I can help if you allow me to, um, to, to kind of kick your ass just for some time, maybe one time, maybe a few times, maybe several I don't know but I I love to do it because I will always do it in a constructive way Mm -hmm. and never to say like see I did it for you yeah no you fucking did it you did this but but you just needed someone else to say hey you can do it you know and and that's so important you know I need you with me in the studio when I'm like "Ah." and my producer I'd I'd love that yeah I anytime just <laughs> come to america yeah. um so uh talking about growls and fry vocals and screams and everything because you taught yourself has there ever been a moment when you're like oh shit i think i heard something or like i ripped yeah. or like was there a problem where you like wake up in your horse and you're like i might have to go to the doctor or something well um thank you for the question because it kind of sounded like I all, you know, I had it all together without problems, but really I did have struggles. And, uh, and that's why it's also interesting. Um, yes, I had many times and actually almost after, after a re- each rehearsal and every gig, I would be, you know, like, <laughs> like this. Mm-hmm. And um, because I did it so wrong, my intention was really right but not anchored enough, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a little technical problem here, but um, but yeah, I did it really wrong, and I was like squeezing and 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 you know in the in the throat area, and mm-hmm. go for it anyway. And that's that is, can you say it's wrong? I feel it's wrong. So um, I yeah I I did have to at some point ask about why am I doing this this way and how can I 
do it differently. And uh, Jamie Dera, he's a, an American coach. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2007, I was on these forums, singer forum, forum. Okay. You know, forum, yeah. it's less now, but it still exists, I think. And I was on, on, on this chat room, you know, with other singers and stuff from Jamie Vendera. And, um, and it was super interesting, this community of singers and stuff back in 2005 or six. And, um, and, and he heard my, uh, my album with Beautiful Sin and it became some, some kind of like privileged relationship that I had with him. Maybe he never felt like that. I don't know. But I felt like he, he, you know, gave me this privilege of talking to me. And I never paid him anything. And I should not say that. But I'm actually very grateful for it. Uh, but we really had a, a few real good exchanges. And, um, and, and uh, the few things that he told me really brought all these puzzle pieces together of what I read left left and right and and Mm -hmm. wherever and that I couldn't understand and with these little explanations I was like I get it I get it and I knew what to do and I started training in a different way and things started to unlock so he really did a, a a great thing for me and that's where I feel a bit the same now for other people is that if you listen to it Jamie thank you but I did the job, I did the work. And that's what other people do as well. But without him being there at the time, it wouldn't be like that. So some people are very important in your life sometimes, you know, they may not do much, but it's that big thing. I see. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Arian because that's where I found out about you, you know, I know. Where I saw you, <laughs> that's where I saw you first. And I was like, oh my fucking God. Yes. Um, yeah. Talk to me about him because he's just, he's such a nice person. He commented on a couple of my videos. And I, I think at that time I l- literally just started my YouTube channel and I was like, the gods of this universe came down from the sky and commented on my videos like that's how it felt to me so talk to me about him and working with him um oh well um the 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 first words that come up are um very talented very kind and very tall oh very i mean i guess yeah because i saw all of you guys coming out at the end of that show and I, uh, yeah he is tall he is super tall everyone jokes about it he jokes about it he is really tall and I'm really tiny so yes so, um, yeah so yeah I'm the dwarf in Arion are you not <laughs> I am I'm you're like a perfect dwarfs. size for a woman I'm tall I'm 5'8 and like sometimes I'm like fuck I wish I was a little bit shorter like <laughs> I feel fine I feel really fine you know even if I really love to wear heels just to uh you know Mm -hmm. but um but yeah hey being tall is one thing but he's tall in 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 the most uh important way of being um, um a very kind human being and and very talented and generous and um and I feel yeah I feel super um honored that I'm part of this big family because he never asks anyone um, without a a good reason and um, and if he asked me at the time back in 2008 it's uh, certainly is not because of my popularity (laughs) you know Uh, because I wasn't popular and um, and and it really helped me in that sense so uh, so yeah it, I had a good time I remember in in 2008 when he he um uh invited me to his studio to record I I was so I don't know if it was stress but I I wanted to do it right and mm-hmm. and not disappoint and and so um he would give me the freedom to come up with my own things but the melody was right there and I loved it so why would I change any of it Mm -hmm. and um and and then he said could you do the harmony like that higher harmony I'm like yeah no problem and then could you do that harmony like that one higher it's like 
I don't know. He said, yeah, you can do it. It's like, okay, you know, and, and I would just, you know, push it and go for it. And, and I did it. So that was really great. And, and then 10 years later, he calls me back to say, hey, would you like to, uh, to replace Russell Allen uh-huh. for, my, for my Arian Universe show? Oh, man, because 10 years before I told him I love Russell so much. And if you ever want anyone to sing Dawn of a Million Souls and, and to have a girl, you know, with the power and balls and just think about me, think of me. And he did. 10 years later, he calls me and he, and he asks me, can you do that? And, uh, and I was at the, at the shop, you know, I was like, you know, like I'm at the shop, you know, it's like, you know and and of course i'm gonna do it you know so this is amazing it's super great he creates magic he does, he definitely does, does. yeah um, and, and a community of beautiful people you ask me you want to go sleep over somewhere and he's an arian fan i go like i go like this like yeah no problem <laughs> No problem. Um, no. So you mentioned that uh, the way he writes, the melodies are there, but he gives you um, the freedom to kind of come up with your own thing. So what we hear on his records, um, is it kind of like a joint effort or he still writes everything from harmonies to music, to melodies, to lyrics, everything? Uh, I, I can't uh, I can say for sure when it comes to everyone else, mm-hmm. right? But I um, I know from from other singers that that some really bring in their own melodies. I think when it comes to lyrics, usually it's his lyrics. Okay. And um, and I, I don't want to talk about something I'm not sure about. But okay. I I can only imagine that if someone has a good reason to to say, I want to say this instead of that, and it's better, he'd be the first to say, of course, you know, because it's all about the end result. So, I see. yeah. What are your favorite bands now? Like, do you, uh, do you go to show? I mean, you perform at the concert, but do you like actually buy tickets and go to like concerts to see other musicians? Oh, wow. Um, I... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you don't the, need to. People probably gonna like, come, but yeah. Well, the, it's like in in between because um, how can I say? I I find myself to be a little bit claustrophobic um, mm-hmm. when when I'm in too many crowded people. I love people. I love to be surrounded wow. by many people, you know. But when it's a little too much, I'm like, oh poor. I'd rather be on my couch. And that's lame. I know. <laughs> I know. But I still really love it. And one of my favorite bands uh right now, one of them is Foo Fighters. Oh. So it was a real slap in, in the face what happened lately, you know, uh-huh. with the drummer. But um but uh, yeah, I mean, if I can go to a gig, I will. And um, and for example, but I don't know. She she won't see it, and it's not a secret anymore, so it's okay. But I'm gonna see Power Wolf uh-huh. in December with my little niece. She's actually 11 years old, and she's a super huge fan. And I thought, wow, it's gonna be her first metal concert. I and so, so, awesome. so, so I'm gonna go and, and see Power Wolf live uh-huh. with my little. That's gonna be an experience. I never went to a metal show with an 11 year old girl. So, but she's gonna be so into it. She knows all the lyrics by heart. I mean, not really, but phonetics. Like, uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great. So, um, yeah. So, I uh, it's actually one of my uh, the things that I want to do next year is to. Uh, um to go for it a little bit more often because by being on stage you tend to forget that you are a fan as well and that you also want to attend concerts and i want to do that again so thank you for reminding me (laughs) do you like touring touring i love it (laughs) i love touring and even in Oh man, I should not say that. No, I I don't like touring in the worst conditions. I I hate it. 
Well, I mean, of course, you're a human. Of, yeah. yeah, I hear it. No, but I wanted to say even if the were in, in the worst conditions, but it's not true. Um, that is true when you're back home and you have anecdotes and you can say, oh man, and this sucked and this sucked and, and I did it anyway. So in that sense, even in the worst conditions, I love touring. But um, but yeah, I do. And because then you're really in this focus of, of what you're doing every night and what what you did that night that was great you can do again and what sucked you cannot do anymore and you can change and 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 every crowd is different and the countries react differently and i love that i really love it and the bunk in the bus is you know that size perfect perfect size for me as a dwarf <laughs> where I can do everything inside the, the bunk, you know, I can change, I can, I can cook, I can, that's not true, but it's really comfortable for me, you know, so I love to worry, yes. I can't mm -hmm. fucking wait till I get, like, the right people around me and actually go on tour, I'm like, oh my god, I'm ready, like, just let's go, so talk to me about um, your band that you are in now, The Price, and uh, how you guys you know, decided to work together? How did it all happen? Um, well, the prize for me is the band that totally makes me happy uh, in the human way, in, in the musical way, and everything around it of, of um, zero stress and uh, only fun and hard work you know, where fun and hard work can go together. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing I can say about the prize. They're really amazing. I love them so much. And uh, how we got together was in, in 2019, I think we really started to talk about it and, you know, and then it really went, but uh, it's basically because I met Christophe Godin. Mm -hmm um in 2000 i think it's 2008 where we are on a on an album together in episode and and there was always this this feeling of like one day we will do something it's written in the stone <laughs> <laughs> it's written in the stars in in the stone i don't know but it was written somewhere uh -huh. and um and, and I already met the, uh, the, the two other guys, Aurel and Yvon, bass and drummer. I, I met them too, uh, that 10 years ago. Um, and, and Christophe, we started a duet together, Acoustic Thrill, covers, tribute to hard rock, heavy songs, mm -hmm. uh, just a playground, no pretense, just we love these songs and we play them together and yay, having gigs and awesome on the couch that's the concept always sitting on a couch with a little table and wine and <laughs> wine is very important yes very important. <laughs> and uh, and from that cover band this duet we thought hey we have so many compositions and ideas and and we are composition people we are we want to do something so why not try something together and we brought in Yvon and Aurel uh, because the three already played together for 20 years so this combo, this trio already works for 20 years. And then there I am not stealing them away because they wanted to do something else, you know? And, and, and for me, I hit the jackpot to have the three of them, you know? They're already super friends. They know how they work together. Mm -hmm. Musically, it's super strong. And, and the challenge was like, can I fit in? Mm -hmm. Can we create this new dynamics? And we did. It's never <laughs> taken for granted. We we talk, we communicate, but it's, it's pretty amazing so far. Yeah. Uh, so as far as like the songs, uh, I understand it's kind of a joint effort to write the songs. So what um, what do you usually what do you like to write more melodies, lyrics, or just kind of come uh, coming up with a concept for the song? Uh, what I like to write more is whatever comes up to me. I have okay. no, honestly I have no preference I never even asked myself that question so thank you for putting me in my head <laughs> <laughs> it's great I mean I love the question um but but sometimes it's gonna be lyrics because I feel like I want to say something and then and very often I'm behind this piano that I love so much 
and something comes out with a melody and no lyrics mm -hmm. and, and then something happens and very rarely this specialness happens this magic of everything is there you know and and one of those songs is where rivers flow part one on our album which is a piano ballad and it just came out you know and I, of course i worked on the details later but it just happened to me it's one of those magical songs and it's just right after my dad passed um and i think that's where you write the best songs it's not especially when you're super happy and you think birds are singing and I love teddy bears, you know, usually <laughs> rainbows and waterfalls. Yeah, it's because something something heavy happened to uh, to you and something heavy can be very wonderful and very positive, but heavy, something that matters, you know, so yeah. Okay, so let's play a um, couple of the songs and you can tell me how did you come up with it and what the song is about and everything about it. So again, you're probably not going to hear it well. I'm going to edit it into, you know, so the, the sound is good, but uh, you know the song, so. I do. All right. Yeah. Um, wait, I had two of them. Well, well, we'll start with Scarier Than You. All right. The Price Scarier Than You. All right, talk to me about the song, uh, about the video. Uh, I know that you said last time that you actually edited the video by yourself. Yeah, I did during the confinement, you know? Yes. Yeah. All right, so tell me about the song. Um, who wrote it? How did you write it? How did you come up with it? The concept for the video, everything. Um, Scarier Than You is a song that is fully written by Christophe Godin, by the guitar player. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I could really relate to it. And I, I, I think when he wrote it, he thought about his own experience, but I think he also thought about me, like she's gonna like that, you know? And, um, and so he, when he comes up with lyrics, he always tells me, do whatever you want with it. If you want to change stuff, you can feel free because he wants me to, uh, to live the song like for myself and, and honestly, that is very precious to have a guitar player that can put his ego aside and say like, now it's up to you. Uh -huh. Precious. precious. So, um, so yeah, he wrote this whole song and arrangements are, you know, all together and the melodies and stuff. And, um, and, and for me, this anecdote is on the break. You know, I told you about that last time, remember on the break when I had this glass of wine or maybe two. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And so uh, this is one of the things that I love about about um, letting go. Sometimes it's not about you have to drink, but uh, definitely not because <laughs> that would suck. But but this specific song, I remember I was alone at the house and I would um, uh, try to come up with this melody on the lyrics and on the music and stuff. And there was a you know, something already, but I wanted to make something special. And I started drinking one glass and then another glass. And, and I felt really good. I felt <laughs> like really good. And, and, and that, that break on the song is, is about like, fuck you, <laughs> you know, and I love it. And, and now that I sing it, I don't need the wine anymore. And every time I feel this vibe of like, fuck off and you know I insist on I I hate no one in this world but some situations or some things you did I hate not you you know <laughs> uh, but uh things people do sometimes I hate it I hate it so much and I was not capable of hating because I didn't want to hate anyone until I found out but you don't have to you can hate the situation and hate what they did doesn't mean you hate them you know and so um 
so yeah this this song is really about uh you know being used or manipulated or and then take over and say guess what now maybe i'm scarier than you and and this is it and now you're the small one you know that's that's really what it's about oh like that's it. dope and um yeah. i remember you said that you always liked uh marticia adams from adams Family. i love it i love and, her and Classic. you kind of and you kind of look like her uh, here like with that black dress and everything so but uh also editing is really good thank you uh how long did it take you do you edit a lot of stuff is it kind of like your thing or you just you know let me see what i can do both okay. uh I, i've been doing it a lot for um for other people so far oh really that is so interesting yeah but i mean never like uh famous people or anything you know but uh but it it trains you you know and um and now for this band, I thought, wow, if I can actually do things myself, um, maybe I actually at some point can can get a little bit more of what I envision and what I see and stuff. And uh, and so I'm, I'm creating this experience for myself um, up to a certain point where I will be, be able to tell the real pros what I really want, because I know what they need to know, so I get what I want, you know? And so I'm creating this experience right now and it's it's very interesting, yeah. Huh, that is really, really cool. Cause I edit my stuff in like three minutes because I just, I can't, I just want to get it over with and like put it up. All right, so let's talk about uh, Blood Red Ink. actually need to say something so to me maybe because the first time i saw you it was um arians uh that show and you were wearing the leather jacket to me in my mind like maggie will always be wearing a leather jacket like to me like this is like you and it's really cool that you're actually wearing a leather jacket here because like for me yeah. i'm like like this is maggie <laughs> Well, I used to sleep with my leather jacket and do everything with my leather jacket. And then I thought maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> okay. No, I'm Talk. kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I love your face when I said it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, the musicians, you know, we're all a little crazy. <laughs> I know, right? But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I love this. I love this look because it has some. Uh, yeah, I, I love I love leather. It's uh, you know, but I love jeans too. Mm -hmm. Very much. Whatever. I love many things as long as it's not she she. Do you know this word she she? Mm, she she. Um, it's I. You know, I'm I'm very. I can be very girlish, but I don't like too girlish. Uh -huh. Okay. So like my personality. Girly. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I could have done my nails today, but I, I said like, fuck it, you know, but I could have. And I was like, ah, oh, nah, nah. You know, well, it's just, um, yeah, I, I like to look pretty, but uh, as long as it doesn't take me too long, if you see what I mean. Oh, me too. Yeah. Yeah, that's me too. So tell me about the song. Uh, Blood Red Ink. Um, 
it actually happens to be another Christophe Godin's composition, you know, all the way, even if on the album we we have some kind of like a, a share share when when it comes to to who did what, but we both agree and we all agree that in the end it doesn't really matter because it's really a band effort. And um and and without the input of everyone, it would never sound like that. And if you want to know um what the, the sound of the prize is, is a song that the four love. Mm -hmm. Does the sound we the four of us love? It's never gonna be like yeah, whatever, I'm playing it, you know, I hate it, but whatever, you know, never going to happen, never. This is not what we do. All the songs we love, the four of us, you know, and um, and sometimes we have to go for compromises. I was just going to say, yeah. Yeah, and this compromise turns out to be a better option, thanks to the input of the others. And we just have to let go and agree that it's so much better now you know mm -hmm. so, yeah so who uh did you edit the video yourself too no oh. no <laughs> no this was actually super awesome we worked with um Enguerrand. it's a french name you know he's a um, uh, 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 realizateur oh man i need to look into my english even if i live with a, an american guy i still am so frenchy you know he loves it well, so you I'm live in a different country so <laughs> Yeah, right. But um, but Enguerrand, uh, Enguerrand Prieux is his name. And um, and he agreed to to work with us for this first clip. And he really um, got into our our vision of what we wanted. And and we took the time with him to to exchange ideas and stuff. And and the prize we wanted this yellow and the reds and that's our colors, you know, and that was the first clip. And, and we also wanted to have this live band uh, image, not a all uh, made up video clip for the first one. We want it to be live. And, and that's who we are. We are a live band with yellows and reds and may, mm -hmm. may probably very uh, different colors, but um, it represents us very well. And Blood Red Ink is the most metal song on this whole album. And we thought, strategically maybe we were totally wrong but that it's kind of a cool way to um to present this new band because i come from a very metal uh, metal world and and um christophe and the guys they are not as metal so they were more into jazz fusion progressive metal okay. rock prog you know all these things and for both it would be a statement to say like for me like don't worry guys, I'm back, you know, with metal and all good, I, I'm, I'm still doing this. And for them, it was like, hey, it's very different, very different, you know? So that's why we chose this song as a first single. Yeah. All right, really cool. Um, so I have one more question and uh, about new singers, about people that just want to do it. You seem like a very, uh, organic person is just like I'm just gonna do it and if I do it with like my heart and my soul it will happen people are gonna love it but what else would you suggest to um the people the singers that just start you know or for like when it comes to me my biggest struggle is to actually find people to work with because I live in New York City where you know hip-hop rules the world unfortunately but and, and it's so hard for me to find musicians to work with and you know if you have any suggestions for me and for everyone out there who is just trying to be Maggie wow okay wow thank you this is very sweet um obviously I don't have the magic answer but um one thing I can say is that to find the right band, the right band to be with and, and last uh, is really like a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, you may be very lucky from the beginning and it's gonna be your lifetime love, you know, until the end of times and, and or maybe not. And for me, I wasn't lucky from the beginning and, uh, and I had to go through many different relationships to find 
this relationship with the prize with these guys and who knows how long it's going to last that's why i say it never take anyone for granted because by your behavior um you may lose everyone by thinking like now this is it and now he's my guitar player and it just you know it's always stay humble but never forget to be proud of what you can do who you are and and if it comes to um you know not finding the right people then just do it yourself as much as you can is is um be interested become as a singer i want to say be a musician first mm-hmm. be a musician in your head doesn't mean you have to play super nice piano guitar or any other instruments but think like a musician and you will attract musicians to you because just to be the singer it's it's a different world um you're gonna end up solo artist or on your own or you know with musicians you end up paying for and do your thing and if you really want to be in a band you need to be a musician and your instrument will be the voice and i think that's something that maybe can help you if you understand what i'm talking about yes i understand and uh the last thing tell us about the plans with the prize are there any um concerts are there any shows is uh any other songs coming out any other music videos and what people should be watching out for oh well uh first of all the plan is to grow organically just the way we always did it um so we have this youtube channel that is growing slowly but really nice because we every time we have a gig we have this after movie to show you a little bit our adventures and take uh-huh. you with us um and uh we are planning on touring of course probably next year because with this whole covid i didn't want to mention the name you know sorry you know but it happened to us right uh-huh. and everything was postponed so we are actually as a newcomer uh very 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 grateful and lucky that we played so much already we went out of france we played poland and Greece and Germany and so we hope to you know spread the joy way more next year we're working on it but this album came out this year and we definitely plan on 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 defending it and making it live with more video clips so now so far we have three mm-hmm. uh we just released Backstreet Chronicles uh when was it two weeks ago I think oh. so check it out um. and um and and there's going to be more clips i my dream would be to have one clip per song but it's not that easy to uh you know of course to do. um and we already are working on a second album so there's definitely more shit coming up so yeah follow right, us YouTube, instagram facebook facebook whatever wherever you find us just yay be with us all right guys so all yes all the links to the price and uh social media and everything will be in the description of this video so Maggie thank you so much oh my god I love you you're like awesome also where did you learn English um when I was a teenager my favorites uh my the the book beside the bed you know uh was a, a dictionary and every night i would open it and i would go yay new words i always wow. loved it i always loved it and uh, when you're interested in music and you want to understand lyrics you learn and now with sundown you know i live with a, an american guy so my english is okay but i you can hear it français hein? french oh, well, i mean i have an accent too i i forget words too it's um, really fine actually well <laughs> I, I wouldn't tell really oh uh, yeah. no I do have an accent it's, it's it's very subtle but yeah all right Maggie thank you so much this was thank awesome you. please uh I mean keep me updated with everything about the price um I'm gonna do uh, a reaction video to one of the songs uh whichever you want me to do uh probably during my live stream this friday so guys check that out at 8 p.m eastern on friday on my channel and yeah keep updating me with everything uh i hope that maybe i'll open for you one day and we'll like meet each other at some sort of like a festival or something and have 
Yeah. <laughs> and have an interview actually face to face but this was so awesome thank you so 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 much well thank you for inviting me and answering this little comment that i put on youtube it's very cool so you never know right yes very nice. all right this thank is you. great talking to you thank you so much and keep it up because i think you spread a lot of joy around i'm keeping it up i'm keeping it up <laughs> thank you yeah, great.